Hello everyone, I'm Mohammed, a postdoc researcher at the University of Pennsylvania. I'm going to talk about SEPAR, a multi-platform crowd working environment. This work has been done in collaboration with Joris and Tristan from University of Rennes and Divi and Amr, my PhD advisors, the University of California, Santa Barbara. Rise of gig economy is reshaping work all around the world. Crowd working environments have grown in numbers, diversity, and adoption. Crowd working environments are envisioned as key technological components of the future of work. In a crowd working environment, we have workers, a platform, and requesters, where the platform is an online intermediary between requesters and workers. Crowd working environments, however, deal with many challenges. First, we need to guarantee the compliance of crowd working platforms with regulations. These regulations are local or global. For example, the regulation on the hour of work. The Fair Labor Standard Act is an example. FLSA says total work hours of a worker per week may not exceed 40 hours. In California, Assembly Bill 5 entitles workers to greater labor protections, such as minimum wage laws, sick leave, and unemployment, and workers' compensation benefits. AB5 was recently overturned by CA Proposition 22. CA Proposition 22 imposes its set of regulations. For example, it requires a worker to work at least 25 hours per week to qualify for healthcare. The next challenge is that there is more than one platform. In practical scenario, we have, for example, more than one ride sharing platform. We have Uber, Curb, Lyft, and workers often work on several platforms. A driver registered for multiple of these platforms. On the other hand, requesters also submit their tasks on multiple platforms. And finally, we need to preserve privacy rights of participants. Indeed, no participants need to obtain or infer any information beyond what is strictly needed. For example, a driver who works for both Uber and Lyft does not want either of them know that she works for the other. But it becomes more and more challenging because on one hand, to enforce regulation, we need to have a transparent view of the tasks and communications between participants. On the other hand, we need to have a, we need to preserve the privacy of participants. So we need to reconcile transparency with privacy. In summary, we want to guarantee the compliance of crowd working platform with regulations. Currently, there are some local regulation exist. For example, Uber and Lyft force drivers to rest at least six hours for every 12 hours in drive mode. But these are per platform. As a result, a driver can drive 12 hours for Uber and switch the platform and drive 12 hours for Lyft in the same day. We need some global regulation. We need transparent and privacy preserving regulation enforcement. And we need collaboration among independent competing platforms. This collaboration is needed to enforce global regulations and also for complex tasks that may need multiple contribution. For example, a requester might submit a task to micro task platforms like Amazon Tork and Prolific and request for like 100 contributions. For the requester, it doesn't matter which platform sends 
the contribution. For example, we might have 100 contribution, 30 of them coming from Amazon Torque, 70 of them coming from Prolific. What is important is the total number of contribution should be 100. So we need some type of collaboration between these, uh, these micro task platforms. And also we need some type of consensus on the order of these contributions because we want to accept the first 100 contribution and no more. So these are the problems that we want to address. So the goal is to enforce regulations on multi-platform crowd working environments while preserving privacy. Enforcing regulations, multi-platform infrastructure, and privacy preserving. These are the three keywords in SEPAR. And our vision for future regulation systems consists of three main design dimensions. First, type of supported regulations. Second, privacy guarantees that the system gives to participants. And third, architecture of the system. Type of regulation. We express regulation as SQL constraint over a universal table. The universal table can be seen as this. Each task as like worker, platform, requester, time cost, contribution, and so on, other columns. And that we categorize the regulation according to their SQL expression. For example, on complexity, a regulation is simple if there is no join, if it can, uh, if it has no join operation. It is complex otherwise. A regulation is raw only if there is no aggregate function. It is aggregate only if it has only comparison over aggregate and it is mixed if there are comparison over aggregates and rows. And by aggregate function, we mean group by and having. We also categorize regulation into enforceable and verifiable. Enforceable regulations are the regulation that must always hold. For example, a worker has to work at most 40 hours a week. Verifiable regulations are the regulation that must hold periodically. A worker has worked at least 10 hours per week. We can check this at the end of the week. The second design space dimension is privacy guarantees. We have the threat model, which could be honest but curious, covert or malicious, and it is system dependent. And we have a privacy model, which includes three pluggable disclosures. We consider disclosures to the participants that are not involved in a crowd working process and have not received the task from the requesters. Disclosure to the platform that have received the task but are not involved in the crowd working process and disclosure to the participants that have received the task and are involved in the crowd working process. And finally, the architectural choice that we have. The regulation system has two components. One is the regulation management that models and enforces the regulations, and one is the global state management that stores the global state of the system. And each of these two components can be centralized or decentralized. So SEPAR is a point in this design space. SEPAR focuses on the interaction and the U table in SEPAR consists of four columns, worker, platform, requester, and time cost. So it doesn't consider, for example, the content of contribution or the content of task. It's only about the interaction between these different participants. And type of regulation is simple and mixed regulations. SEPAR also supports enforceable and verifiable, both type of regulations. The privacy guarantees that support that SEPAR supports is 
covered non-cluding adversaries, so SEPAR. And the disclosure set is defined based on those three disclosures. SEPAR also had a hybrid architecture. SEPAR has a registration authority that registers participants, models, regulation, and distributes crypto materials. This registration authority is implemented in a centralized manner. It also has a multi-platform infrastructure that maintains the global states of the system within a blockchain, and it is decentralized. And also, SEPAR has a set of consensus protocol to establish agreement between different platforms. Inspired by eCash system, SEPAR implements enforceable and verifiable regulations by managing two budgets per participant. Budgets are modeled as lightweight, single-use, and anonymous tokens. So the registration authority refreshes participants' token periodically. Basically, we define tokens based on regulations. And then we have different function, generate, spend, prove, check, and alert for these tokens. For example, to generate token, to spend token, to prove that the token is uh, basically spent in the right way and to check token. The architecture of SEPAR, as can be seen, a platform has a set of nodes. to be fault tolerant. The number of nodes depends on the failure model of nodes. Assuming there are F failure and nodes are crash only, then the platform size, the number of nodes would be 2F plus one. If nodes are malicious, the platform size would be 3F plus one. And we have a blockchain ledger, which is replicated on every node. So the execution sequence would be like this. The registration authority sends tokens to worker requester and platforms. Then we have a task that request sends it to the platform. Platform publishes the task to the, block, uh, to the blockchain and informs workers that that task has been published. Workers send their contribution intent to the platform. Platform sends some claim transaction to the blockchain and send demand for tokens to the worker and requester. They send their tokens to the platform. Platform sends sig demand for signature. They send a group signature. And platform put all tokens and signature and send a verification transaction to the blockchain. Note that the verification transaction is appended to the blockchain of all platforms to enable all platforms to verify that this transaction, that this task, has been performed in the right way. And then everyone can verify the tokens and signatures. And at the end, we can exchange contribution and reward between the involved participants. We have different type of consensus in SEPAR, local, cross-platform, and global. So the local is needed for submission and claim task of internal uh, task, for uh, submission and claim transaction of internal task. Cross-platform is needed for submission and claim transaction of cross-platform task, and verification is needed for global uh, for glo uh, global uh, consensus is needed for verification transactions of all tasks. In the experimental setting, here the goal is to measure the token generation performance. So SEPAR is generated tokens in linear time and is able to generate 1 million tokens in 76 seconds. As can be seen, the class of regulation doesn't affect the performance. By class of regulation, we mean the number of participants that are involved in a regulation. And here, we want to measure the overhead of the privacy preserving mechanisms. So when there is no privacy preserving mechanism, this, this black graph, SEPAR is able to process 7,000 transactions in 
uh, around 400 milliseconds. Adding privacy preserving mechanism, it's only 11% throughput and 15% latency overhead. So that shows these, all these privacy preserving mechanism has if, uh, an acceptable range of true uh, overhead the separ. We have more experiments in the paper. So we show an overall vision for future of work multi-platform regulation system based on three dimension, type of regulation, privacy, and architecture. CEPAR is the first to address the problem of enforcing global regulation over multi-platform cloud working systems, and that supports greater than and lower than regulations. And CEPAR has implemented over a permission blockchain that provides tra transparency using distributed ledgers. Thank you.